Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out on the Nintendo Switch in this upcoming week. The games included will be being released in the period of the 5th of September up until the 12th. Now this is one of those sort of weeks where you look at the coming soon page on the eShop and you see the thumbnails and nothing really springs out at you at all. And whilst there are no heavy hitters, so to speak, a little bit of digging into the games themselves does at least reveal a few interesting ones coming. So what is coming? Well, let's find out. Just a cheeky little edit before we get started, this is next day Glenn doing this as opposed to previous day Glenn who does a sterling job on the rest of the video by the way. As I was making this video, Nintendo updated the eShop page, give it a bit of a makeover, it has the Mario theme now, but also Phenotopia was released for other regions, it had already been out in North America without much fanfare at all. So if you are one of the people that were looking forward to that game, it is now available in other regions. I'll put a link to our review for it in the top in comment if you want to have a look what it's all about. The Mario Direct also happened whilst I was making this, although that doesn't directly affect this video because the first of those games is released next week, so that will be in next week's video. Okay, back onto today's video then. The first game being released on the 8th of September then, this is Avicii Invector, which is a rhythm game based on the music of the Swedish DJ Avicii, real name Tim Berglin, who very sadly died in 2018. This was created in collaboration with Avicii before his death and it includes 25 of his best known hits including songs such as Without You and the fantastic Wake Me Up, what a song that is. You will be guiding a ship through six worlds based on the music of Avicii and the blurb states that you will be taken on a musical odyssey of serene exploration. There is also an encore edition releasing for £9 more which includes 10 additional tracks and whilst it doesn't state it explicitly on the eShop page as far as I can see at least, I have heard that a percentage of the proceeds from these games will be going to the Tim Berglin Foundation which was set up by the family to assist medical researchers working in the field of mental health, specifically that of suicide prevention. Next up and also out on the 8th we have Party Hard 2. Now the original Party Hard is also on the Switch and it's a game about a man that's trying to get some sleep at night whilst his neighbours are having a party so he goes next door and starts killing the party goers. This sequel claims to have a lot of new features some of which are included here on the blurb such as having dozens of new traps including being able to combine certain items or substances and see how they react with each other. There are four playable characters this time each with their own playstyles and stats, 14 different levels and two boss fights, a new crafting system, a multi-kill ability and party vision which allows you to scan the room for targets and objects. It's selling for £17.99 although there is a collector's edition also listed on the eShop which includes about £6 worth of DLC selling for £21.59 so you'll save yourself a couple of pound if you buy it that way. Next up selling for £13.49 we have Okonoka Madness which is a platform game but designed with speed running very much in mind. There are free speed run modes and more than 100 levels. Judging by the trailer you'll be running, jumping, wall climbing, swinging and avoiding various obstacles as well as taking part in boss fights. There are both local and online leaderboards for you to post your best times and several different characters to unlock each with their own unique abilities. It has a nice hand drawn art style and an abundance of colour and if you are interested this one also comes out on the 8th of September. Then we have Meganoid which is selling for £8.99 describing itself as a challenging platformer which sees you having to find items to enhance your character and his abilities whilst descending down into the Meganoid spaceship. It has a lot of the buzzwords that people will either love or hate these days including random generation of levels, roguelite elements, it has pixel art and was originally a mobile game. I can almost hear the pitchforks being sharpened as I'm speaking. Now I'm sure some of you will be screaming for the hills at this point but I have heard that it is one of the better mobile games and one that a lot of people really wanted to come to a console so they could play with a proper controller. Its problem of course is that on the Switch there are just so many games like this that it is going to have to do what it does very well in order to stand out. And robots fail to... <laughs> and still there's more. There are hidden worlds with secret items to find and big bosses to fight. 
It really is true. Meganoid is back and more awesome than ever. Next then we have a game called Minoria, which is selling for £15.09. And, and this is actually a spiritual sequel to a game called Momodora, which is also on the Switch. It's developed by the same team. And whilst I haven't played that game myself, I have heard it's very good. This uses a more hand-drawn, cel-shaded art style compared to the pixel art found in Momodora, but looks to have similar sort of gameplay mechanics in terms of that 2D action-adventure game with that swordplay combat including the parrying and dodges and also allows you to use a variety of different spells. The story is based around medieval Europe and there's also a levelling system for your characters included too. To be fair, it looks absolutely lovely and could be a bit of a sleeper hit this week and it comes out on the 9th of September. Coming out on the 10th we have Hotshot Racing, which is an arcade inspired racing game with a low poly art style which most certainly evokes memories of virtual racing for me, as well as looking a little bit like a newer game called Horizon Chase Turbo, also on the Switch, an absolutely fantastic game, one of my favourite racers of all time actually. This one promises 60 frames per second arcade racing, with 16 racing circuits to attempt, covering a variety of locations such as a coastal scene, the jungle, an alpine setting and also Las Vegas. There is a time trial mode as well as a Grand Prix mode and a few other modes such as things like Cops and Robbers which sounds quite interesting. You can play it in single player, four player split screen or with eight players online and it also mentions that drifting is a crucial part of the mechanic in this particular game. It's selling for £15.99 but does have 20% off of that price up until the 17th of September and I will most certainly be keeping an eye on this one. Next is a game called Mo Astray which sells for £11.39 although it does have 10% off of that price up until the day before launch. This is a side scrolling action platformer where you play as a green blob which awakens inside an abandoned laboratory with the outside world being full of hostile life including humans which have been taken over by some sort of parasite. You must make your way through levels, sticking to walls, squeezing through spaces and taking over the humans to try to get them to perform certain tasks, allowing you to move on. In fact, it sounds very similar to the game Carrion, which came out recently for the Switch. I know this particular game has been out elsewhere for a good few months, but it definitely reminds me of Carrion. I don't know how long the game is or whether there's a lot of combat or whether it's more puzzle based, but it definitely, again, looks interesting. This is a week of quite interesting looking games once you dig into them. Then we have Bounty Battle which is selling for £19.99 but it does have 20% off of that price up until the 23rd of September. Now this is an indie brawler, it has a huge amount of characters from a variety of indie games, games including Darkest Dungeon, Flint Hook, Dead Cells, Axiom Verge and Guacamelee just to name a few and it brings those characters together in a fighting game. Now having just watched the trailer I can't really ascertain whether it's a Super Smash Bros type fighting game or a more traditional one on one, I'm assuming the former to be honest as it does say there's up to four players and if you are a fan of any of those characters from those particular games you may have a lot of fun here. And then a game that's been coming soon for the Switch for a very long time now, it's finally here this week, this is RPG Maker MV. Now the RPG Maker series has been going for a very long time now, way back into the 90s on PC, and has had a few games on consoles over the years including the Super Famicom, PlayStation and even the 3DS got a version as well a few years back. This gives you the tools to create your own RPGs, being able to choose from hundreds of assets within the game, putting them together to tell your own story. You can then upload your finished games online for other people to play. Now this one sells for £44.99, which is about £15 cheaper than the version on Steam, but I don't know how much this particular version includes compared to that one, because there are other bundles on there that go for anywhere up to £90, so I don't know what this base game on the Switch includes, how many asset packs it has, or anything like that, and it doesn't really tell you on the blurb either. The blurb in fact is quite short and sweet. It's great to have a game such as this on the Switch and there are some fantastically creative people out there that will make some wonderful games I'm sure based on it. 
If you are one such person, this game is coming out on the 11th, and as I said, it has been a long time coming. And then the final game for this week is a game called Firework which is selling for £13.49 and is an action platform game where you need to save a facility from burning down. You make your way through the facility, jumping, firing your gun and dashing in midair to repel the fire and extinguish the flames, also taking down enemies as you go. There are hidden power ups and special equipment and the game very much reminds me in terms of its art style of a Commodore 64 game, a home computer that I have a lot of love for having had one myself back in the day. Judging by the trailer it even has a hint of synth in its music, not much but it's definitely in there. Now it says the game finally arrives on the Nintendo Switch and is a revisited version enriched by co-op mode perfect to play with Joy-Cons. I did try to search for more information on this game to see where it had been before but couldn't find anything on it at all so if you do know which consoles it's been on before please do let us know in the comments section. So there you have it, another 10 games for the Nintendo Switch coming this week. Now again, I'm pretty sure this is the sort of week where you'll have a lot of people say there's nothing for me, which is fair enough, but just from those 10 games, the racing game, dear me, looks amazing, please be good. <laughs> Avicii Infector looks great for me, Minoria looks fantastic, and that Moa Stray, if it's anything like Carrion, I'd have a good time with that too. Anyway, please do let me know if any of these games interest you, will you be picking any of them up? A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.